In this short video, I'm going to show you how to download and process soil data. To follow with me, you need to click on this link and, or find it on Canvas and click on it to go to this ArcGIS webpage to be able to download soil data for our study area. Once you click on this, you can uh, resume and follow with me. The link that I provided for you looks like this by default. You need to zoom out to be able to see other HU8 or Hydrologic Unit 8 watersheds in the US as well. We are interested in Lower Minnesota watershed, so I'm going to go over here. And then you, I know that this blue one is my watershed, but if I want to make sure, if you click on it, it says Lower Minnesota. And then if you click on download, you will be actually able to download this under folder that you want to. I'm going to, in my directory, create a new folder called soil data without any space and then save this under that which will be over here right now i am going to go to the directory to show you how it, it looks like so the soil data is over here and this is the data that i just downloaded the extension for this file is ppkx which is by default an arcgis pro extension so if you double click on this automatically one ArcGIS Pro uh, package will open up, okay? If it doesn't open up, you need to double click, go to open with, and then select ArcGIS Pro, and then click OK. Um, after a couple of seconds, you will see that one ArcGIS project will open up that has your soil data in it. All right, this is the ArcGIS um, file that opens up. So yours is probably going to be a little bit different from me me because I was working on this before recording this video so it's a little bit different but uh, overall so for example you're not gonna have this um, table open and the legend is going to be different in yours however if I, you basically right click and then go to attribute table you can see the table and you should be familiar with this table why because remember when we calculated curve number this is the table that we use i'm going to show the hydrologic soil groups if i can find them over here uh, you use the hydrologic soil groups to find the curve number for the study area which was lower minnesota watershed as well here we go this is the hydrologic group that we work with right now uh, let me close this to show you from here if you right click and then go to symbology you'll see the symbology that I have currently I want to map the soil group and I'm gonna do this because I noticed something was uh, not visually appealing with what you submitted so I'm gonna show you how to do this so this is hydrologic group and you can see A, A, D, B, B, D, C, C, D, and D. But this map is not readable because, and that's because the basically the border lines of these polygons. Okay, so let me show you. If I, if you click on any of these, and you go to properties, you will see that the color is red. The outline color is kind of gray. This gray color because we have so many polygons. If I zoom in. Look at the outline is gray, right? This gray color, when you zoom out, makes our map gray. But in reality, we know that our map is not gray, right? So we need to get rid of this outline color. How to do that though? We wanna do it for all of them together. First of all, select one another type of um, color that is more descriptive. I'm gonna select this one, for example, okay? Once it is changed over here, I'm going to go over more and then click on format all symbols. And then outline color right now is gray. I'm gonna change it to no color. And then apply. Immediately, you will see that right now your map is way more descriptive than what it was before, okay? Now, this would be your map. What I'm going to do I'm not going to talk about a lot about visuals right now. I'm going to, right now, we want to ex export this map into uh, the project that we created that had land use and watershed boundary uh, data set. So I'm going to right click on it and then click on data export feature. 
this is going to pop up over here. And then I'm going to call it Lower Minnesota Watershed Soils. And then at the output location, you need to change that output location. Uh, let's put it under databases, not templates. I'm going to go under folders. Um, I'm going to find my, there we go, desktop. I'm going to find basically my data folders over here and then soil data. Over here, I'm going to save it, click on soil data and OK. So the output location is in soil data. The output name, I'm going to call it Lower Minnesota Watershed Soils. And I make, made a mistake over here. This was our input, not output. So input should be map units. There we go. Now it works. And then output is lower Minnesota watershed underscore soil dot SHP. Once this is correct, and then you click run. And after a couple of seconds, this should be done. Depending on how fast or how small your computer is, this might take a little bit longer mine is pretty fast considering that I am recording a video as well so I'm gonna just wait for it until this is done and show you how to move forward perfect now you can see that I have my lower Minnesota watershed soils over here right now we don't care about um, symbology so once I have this Make sure that you know where this is saved. And then I'm going to close this. And I'm not going to save this project. What I'm going to do is going to go back to my project over here. I had my land use, right? And again, under insert, I'm going to create a new map. This new map over here would be map number two. I'm going to add my soil type over here. So I'm going to go under map and add, uh, go to data, refresh soil data and then I'm going to add lower Minnesota watershed soils over here perfect over here now what I want to do is to change the symbology to something that I like to something that is representative right now is under single symbol I'm going to change it to unique values and over here I'm going to change it to um, hydrologic groups hydrologic groups will be uh, if I can find them, what would be the hydrologic group? This is hydrologic classes. Here, H, Y, D, G, R, P, D, C, D. That's the hydrologic group that we are interested in. You will see over here. What I'm going to do is change the symbology to something more descriptive like this. And then as I showed you, click on more, format all symbols, and outline color will be no color, and then click apply. You'll see that immediately this map is way more better uh, than the previous map, okay? Now, save your project. If you want to make this map even better, click on map one, and then copy the boundaries of the watershed, copy it, and go to map 2 and right click on map 2 and paste it over here you will see and this is uh, the bound now you have the soil type and the boundary and the boundary of the watershed as well don't forget to save this and this is do not close this project we still have one more video to show you something but this is how you download soil data and process soil data